Over recent years, a new trend has developed in anime where a series will open with the main character and his or her gang already seemingly being the most powerful characters in the series, or at least the largest group of top tier characters. The most prevalent shows that come to mind for me are The Seven Deadly Sins, Overlord, and Slime. These types of series tend to have a polarizing effect where you have a type A and type B situation. The type A person will like all of these shows and type B will hate all of them. While I can understand the Type B's opinion, I certainly fall into the Type A category. I think the main draw towards these series is similar to why people like to watch James Bond movies, except I think there is a key difference between the two. James Bond is a semi-realistic version of what hyper-competence looks like, in which I mean he is extremely good at almost everything. Of course, he is a master government agent and is capable of carrying out any mission, but he is also good at everything that might concern someone in their life. He is extremely good with women. In Casino Royale, he appears to be, even though that was a terrible poker scene, highly skilled at poker, which at the higher levels could be seen as a way of generating cash. His martial arts and overall skills in combat are top notch. The guy is a jack of all trades, except he's actually a master of all trades. That's cool and all, but it's hard for me to take that too seriously because there is no way any person could be so skilled at literally anything that presents itself, but I can understand why someone would enjoy something like that. It's fun to see someone performing at extremely high levels. That's why we like watching professional sports. I think that the huge difference between James Bond and the types of series I'm talking about is that generally speaking, aside from their extremely high combat capacities, the characters are noticeably flawed and in some cases, each character will have something they are exceptionally lacking in. This is what I like to call the Band of Goons archetype. A mainstream show that I would say pulls this off the best is The Seven Deadly Sins. The characters are quite clearly portrayed to be simultaneously masters in combat as well as masters in a particular defect. This isn't even reaching either, it's quite straightforward that they all have specific flaws. After all, they are called the Seven Deadly Sins, not the Seven Fluffy Virtues. Even if they are all unbelievably overpowered, I don't feel the need to dismiss them since it makes more sense to me. If we had seven James Bonds, we might have a problem. There would be no point of tension in the series as far as social situations and diplomacy go, and there certainly wouldn't be risk of interpersonal conflict. I much prefer a group of renegades who just happen to stumble across each other with slightly similar goals. Overlord is another point of contention for this reason. As many isekai go, the main character is plopped into a video game-like world and is instantly the most powerful person there. To make matters worse in the case of Overlord, he is also surrounded by people of similar, if not higher in some cases, levels of power who don't just do exactly what he says, but probably jerk it to the thought of him after hours. I mean, sure, he didn't have to work for anything and it feels like everything is unearned, but who really cares? I for one love the fact that they are overly devoted to Ainz and it adds such a level of irony since all they really value at the end of the day is power and they could easily kill him if two of them teamed up. To further add to the hysterics, we regularly get a look into Ainz's thoughts about how he's just a normal guy and doesn't actually have any idea what he's doing. Not every show has to be like Naruto or One Piece or Hunter x Hunter, where the main character clearly starts at the bottom of a hierarchy of power levels and has a clear path they are going to walk down for the entire series. It's really funny to see what the flip side is like. What's it like to see a top tier character that didn't do anything special to attain that power? Slime was another show I enjoyed thoroughly. It was extremely similar to Overlord in the sense that the main character was overpowered and surrounded by other overpowered people, but this story was very different in a few key aspects. First of all, Rimuru is a slime. Even if we do find out that his slimeness is actually the most OP thing this world has ever seen, it is entertaining to see exactly how that could be the case since it is so backwards. Additionally, Rimuru had to actually gather his followers, and he never forced anyone to do so. All of his adventures involve him helping people out of goodwill, and in return and in admiration of his power, he attracts powerful allies to build a fun and just society. He never walked into this world and thought that he needed to take the world by storm, and that's completely fine. And that's what I think all of this really comes down to. The main thing I wanted to establish in this video is that these band of goons types of stories don't need to be considered for casuals or any of that BS. They simply have a different format than what happens to be the most popular. 
I would argue that if there is anything that is for casuals, it would be the types that do have the bottom to top format that we all know and love. It's most likely that your gateway anime is going to be one of those types, and for a good reason. It is super enjoyable to see a character start at the bottom and watch their journey all the way to the top, but can't we agree if every story was like that it would get pretty boring after a while? Instead of watching that journey for years on end until they finally make it and then having the story end right after they accomplish the original goal, wouldn't it be fun if we could just sit back and relax while watching what it actually looks like to see a character at the top? That's all I really wanted to say this video. Basically, I think the people who are adamantly against the Band of Goons show should give them another shot and try not to take the whole thing too seriously. It's not like every show has to be highly philosophical or have characters encounter moral gray area decisions every episode. Sometimes it's fun to just watch some funny shit and cool animated fights. That's the end of this video. If you've made it this far, I can't tell you how much I absolutely appreciate the shit out of you. If you did enjoy it, remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, remember to leave me a comment letting me know what you thought about the video. If you like these new types of videos I'm doing where they are way more edited, as well as branching out from One Piece content. I want to know if uh, maybe a lot of people are going to be upset that I am not leaving it behind, but doing a lot of other things now. Additionally, if you have not done so already, make sure to check the link in the description of the video to my Discord channel. We have a lot of fun stuff going on in there all the time. We have voice chats. We have like 300 different text channels talking about different shows and stuff not even related to anime, just people having fun shooting the shit all the time. It's a great place. I'd like to see more of you guys there. With that all being said, I hope you guys have an excellent rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.